Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you were here for my previous video, you know that I started a Halloween costume based on one of the costumes from a simplicity pattern. I do believe it's 8719, which is a witch costume. The last video I did was the shrug and I will link it either above or below so you can go watch that. There's some information about tabs and stuff in there that you might want to watch because I didn't feel like repeating all that information through each video. It might be boring. So yeah, without much further ado, let's go. All right, before we begin, let me show you my mock-up and what I did with the pattern. Originally, I upsized it to what size I thought I needed, but it was a little off because the biggest size jumped up an extra one fourth of an inch, and I couldn't make up my mind if I wanted to follow that larger line trend or continue on with the previous sizes. In hindsight, I would suggest following the same line trend pattern as the previous smaller sizes and treating 22 like it still exists, but more of an outlier. Following the same line trend and going in the same direction as 22 was going was giving me extra space, which is not what I needed. So in the end, as you can see here, it ended up being a little bit bigger than what I would have liked it to be. So I did end up taking in about like an inch, maybe two inches, I do believe. So I did end up taking it in by like an inch, but because it had elastic at the top, I wanted that extra like that extra poofiness for bloomers. The leg bands also needed to be taken in. I'm not quite sure if you can see it or not, but the left side, I tried to make it smaller, which made the whole puffy bloomer effect bigger, which I liked. So I copied the pattern onto my satin and I got started. Taking your biggest short piece, so two running stitches from one notch to the other across the bottom. And like I said before, we're not folding it. I'm just showing you getting as much into the picture as possible. Fold the piece in half now with right sides together, matching the inner seam and stitch. Press the seams flat. Do the same for the other piece as well. With right sides together, insert one leg into the other, matching the inner lead seam notches. Pin and then stitch up the inner U-shape. You can sew over that seam again to reinforce it. I also did the tabs the same way I did in the shrug video. You can see it in more detail in my shrug video, which I will link above. The only difference I did do was I added the buckles ahead of time so that it'd be just a little bit easier and more finished. Taking your interface leg band, number eight, pin your tabs, number 19 and number 20 to the dots, then baste them in place. Place number seven leg band to eight, right sides together, matching notches and stitch them together. Press the seams away from piece eight. and trim off any extra little pieces of band that's in the seam. Fold up the lower edge of the band, the unnotched edge, by 5 eighths of an inch, then trim it to 3 eighths of an inch. With right sides together, pin leg edge to the band matching seams, notches, and dots. Because I upsized mine, a few of my dots didn't match, but I made sure the important ones did and I gather the edges to fit in the fullness. Once that's pinned down, baste then stitch. Press the band in the cuff away from the leg. Do the same on the other side as well. Fold the cuff to the inside enough so that the folded part of the band covers the seam allowance. Pin the fold over the seam and sew it from the other side, close to the seam or in the seam, like I did. I just prefer a neater look and sewing in the ditch makes that happen. I also pressed the seam after I was done. If you have buckles like me, I added Velcro underneath them so that they would stay in place, which even if you didn't, they do seem to be a little long and I just prefer to look nicer and Velcro helped. Fold the waist down by one and a half inches and press. Then fold up the lower edge underneath by one fourth of an inch. 
Sew across the 1 4 of an inch fold, forming a casing. Make sure you leave about an inch opening in the casing. Take your elastic with a safety pin attached to it and feed it into the casing. When it reaches the other side, hold on to that bitch because it will get away from you. Pin the ends together and stitch them. Release the elastic back into the casing, close any opening, and then stitch that opening closed. This is completely optional, but the pattern suggests stitching through the waistband casing and elastic to keep the elastic from rolling on the inside, which is what I did, but through the seam line. I can say these shorts, bloomers, are the most comfortable thing I have ever put on my body that I have made so far. Like, they are so spacious, they're flowy, like, you get circulation, they feel good on the skin, like, they give all your body mo movement and space to breathe, like, <sighs> the only problem I have to say is they're a little bit big, and I do find myself squatting like the Oompa Loompas in Willy Wonka. Those are my only issues, <laughs> but other than that, I think they came out really cute. They don't look good here, but I promise you in person they look really nice my favorite piece out of this whole costume so yeah but thank you so much for joining me today um the next two videos for the rest of this costume should come out tomorrow i do believe and if you have any questions or comments please let me nice comments and you can put those down below please like this video and subscribe if you wouldn't mind i will also post my instagram and my twitter down below because i now have a twitter just which is great i mostly just follow bts stuff but you know Twitter's down below. Uh, yeah. I will hopefully see you folks. Hopefully. Why do I always say hopefully? I will see you folks next week. Bye.